Hi yogis! Today's practice is a slow flow with focus on opening the chest and shoulders and upper arms while strengthening and we will also open and strengthen the back body as well. So for practice you will need two props. The first can either be a bolster if you have it or a firm pillow. If you don't, no biggie, you can use a blanket and please just roll it up so that it's as thick as it possibly can be and a little blanket burrito that we will get started in. And then also the second prop will be a strap. If you don't have a strap, you can use a belt, a scarf, or a longer towel. And this can be set up towards the top of your mat, please. So we're gonna get started in a little supporting back bend using whatever prop you have. So set it up towards the back of your mat and please lie down on it so that the prop comes just behind the heart space. So ideally at the base of the shoulder blades and then you'll gently recline over it, opening the arms wide and let your skull be heavy on your mat. Palms turn open. And if it feels more supportive in the low back, you can walk the feet as wide as your mat and knock the inner knees together. Or you can extend the legs forward towards the top of your mat, feet at least hips width distance or wider, so that the inner thighs can spiral out and toes can flop open. And allow your eyes to close. Tune in to the sound of your breath. And allow the external world to melt away as you tap into your rich inner landscape. And please bring your awareness to the center of your chest at the heart level. Here is your heart chakra, also called Anahata which translates to mean unstruck or unhurt. And I just think that's a beautiful reminder of the resiliency of our hearts. And that no matter what pain and suffering our hearts have endured, they still have an infinite capacity to love and love again unconditionally. The color of your heart chakra is green. If you'd like, you could visualize a green ball of spinning energy shining so brightly right at the center of your chest. Here is our center for love, compassion, joy, and forgiveness. So if we are to give others love, compassion, joy, and forgiveness, we must first have it for ourselves, right? So what better time to practice this self-love, self-compassion, and self-acceptance here on our mats? This is a very intimate practice with ourselves. Please take a slow, rich breath in through your nose, expanding your lungs, really lifting and elevating the heart space. And then part your lips and audibly exhale it out. Again, slow, full inhalation, expanding the ribs, uplifting the heart. Part the lips and let the breath wash over you like a calming wave. And one more slow, full breath in through the nose and out through the mouth. Then seal your lips and breathe in and out through your nose. Please stretch your arms overhead, big reach through the arms and fingers, and then walk the legs a little closer together. Point the toes and take a full body stretch, adding a slightly deeper back bend. Press down through the tailbone, arch the low back, full breath in. 
and breath out. And then bend your knees one at a time, roll off to one side, and then gently press yourself up off of your prop. And if you have a blanket, you can unroll it and use it for your knees in a moment or even under your seat uh, as we'll be coming into Sukhasana. Easy seat, crossing at the shins. And uh, we will use our strap in just a moment, but first, just to find a little bit more neutrality after that back bend, please bring your palms to heart center and lower the forearms down so that they're parallel to the earth. Spread the fingers and then start to press the heels of your hands against one another. And then press the bases of each knuckle into one another. So you should feel your front turn on the top of the chest, right? The pecs and the front of the shoulders, the deltoids. So pressing firmly through all corners of the hands and feeling the lift through the back, the back of the skull. <laughs> Take a full breath in and a full breath out. And one more for good measure, really growing tall through the spine and feeling yourself grounded with the exhale. And release your hands to the knees. Just pause for a moment. Open the eyes and please grab your strap or your belt or whatever prop you're using and open it up so that it's wide enough that you can grab it with both hands outer shoulder distance in width. And if you do have a strap, please hold the buckle with one hand so that it's not going to hit you in the head. <laughs> then pull the strap apart with both arms so that it's taut and it uses a little bit more activation in the upper arms and shoulders. So a bit of shoulder flossing here. Inhale, the strap comes overhead. And exhale, bring it behind the back, squeezing the shoulder blades, lifting the sternum, maybe the gaze. Inhale, bring the strap back over your head. And exhale, lower the strap down, shoulder height. Again, inhale to bring the strap overhead. Exhale to bring it behind the back. Inhale, lift it over your crown. This time, let's add a lateral bend. So using the right hand, pull the strap down and reach both arms to the right. You're still pulling the strap apart with both arms. And then get really heavy through your left sitting bone. If the weight starts to lift off of the left sitting bone, bring the strap up just a bit so that you're grounded through your seat and you have integrity in the pose. Take another breath. And then slowly on the inhale, strap comes overhead. And then take it over to the left. Again, rooting down through the right sitting bone, reaching through both arms to the left, opening up the right side body. And the low belly is firm so that your lower back is protected. One more breath here. And then inhale, the strap comes back over crown. Exhale, bring it behind the back, opening up the pecs and deltoids. Inhale, strap over the crown. And exhale, lower down shoulder height. And then lower all the way down. And just take a moment with the hands on the knees to notice the sensations in the shoulders and chest. And breathe a little space there. And then we'll take it one more round and if you are desiring a slightly deeper stretch, you can go shorter with your grip. If you're like, mm, that was plenty intense, then keep it the same way. Inhale, strap over crown. Exhale, bring it behind you. Find that sweet spot, really deep opening to the upper chest. Inhale, strap over crown. And over to the right in a lateral bend. Movement to breath. Inhale, bring the strap over the head. Exhale to the left, rooting through the right sitting bone. Low belly stays engaged. Inhale, come back up. And again, behind the back. One more round. Inhale, overhead. Exhale, lowered in front of you, shoulder height. Pull it apart with your arms. Inhale, overhead. Exhale, behind the back. Inhale, overhead. 
Exhale, lateral bend to the right. Inhale, take it up. And exhale to the left. Inhale all the way up. And exhale, lower slowly. Hands atop the knees, eyes closed. And just start to feel into your body. Observing the sensations. Perhaps some heat in the upper arms and shoulders. Maybe feeling a slight tingling sensation into the forearms and hands as the blood flows back into those areas. And then eyes can softly open. You can set your prop to the side. You will not need it anymore. And then please come to your hands and knees, tabletop position. If you have that blanket, you're welcome to use it underneath the kneecaps for support. Hands stack over the wrists, hips over the knees, shin bones are pointed straight back. Let's warm up the spine through some cat-cows. Really spread the fingers and then inhale, micro bend the elbows, drop the belly, lift the tailbone, heart and gaze to follow. Exhale, press the earth away, engage your abdominals, pointing the tailbone down. Inhale, softly bend the elbows, sway the spine forward, pull the shoulder blades down the back. Exhale, pressing the earth away, lifting the navel in and up, opening the back of the heart. Two more rounds at your pace. And inhale to find a neutral spine, feeling the length from your tailbone all the way to your crown. And you can stay where you are. I'm going to turn to face you for this next shape. So from here, step your right foot out to the right so that your heel is in line with your left knee. Stay grounded through your right palm. Take an inhale and open the left arm up, spiraling the left rib cage open. And then as you exhale, thread your left arm underneath your right, lowering the left shoulder head to your mat and your left cheek to rest. Then from here, turn your left shin bone in at a slight angle towards the right foot. That'll give you a little bit more support as you open and stretch the right arm high and then allow it to gently drape behind you, just in midair. Now, if you're feeling any strain in the neck or in the spine, you can internally rotate your right arm and take a half bind if that feels a little bit more supported. You can always bring that right hand back to the earth too. But we're here for just a few breaths. Just allow the chest space to really open and just relax into this little twist. The gaze is neutral so that the neck can be long and spacious. And notice if you're rolling to the inner arch of the right foot. See if you can press down through the pinky edge side and lift the inner arch, almost like a warrior two stance. Then slowly lower the right palm back to the earth and turn the left shin straight back. Press down through your right hand and slowly re-extend the left arm all the way up on the inhale and lower the left arm exhale. You can step your right knee back to meet your left and then step your left foot out to the left. And again, press down through the pinky edge side, lifting the inner arch. Inhale, the right arm opens as you spiral the right rib cage towards the sky. Exhale, thread the right arm under the left, lowering the right cheek. Left hand can stay next to the face. Uh, right shin turns in at a slight angle. Take it the same way you did on the first side, opening the chest as you reach the left arm up and then bring it behind you. Just allow it to drape open. Or if you'd like to take the half bind, turn the palm back, internal rotation, and bring that hand just towards the right hip crease. Take a couple more full, expansive breaths. And 
then slowly bring your left palm back to the earth if it was lifted. Turn the right shin bone straight back. Press down for the left palm as you reopen the right arm high and then softly lower the right palm down. Step the left knee back and come back table top. From here, arch the back. Inhale into your cow pose. Exhale, round the back. Cat pose, curl the toes and lift the hips, downward facing dog. Now take a moment to find a little movement and organic expression. Bending into one knee and then the other, swaying the hips a little right and left. Find freedom in your neck, maybe a few sways of the head. And then start to find stillness whenever you're ready. And really find the integrity through the spine. So you can keep the knees as bent as they need to be so that you can lift the hips up and draw the low belly in so you're lifting the kidneys slightly up just underneath the rib cage, right? And you're pulling the shoulder blades down the back onto the ribs. And then feel the inner thighs roll back behind you and draw the sitting bones down towards the heels. Deep breath in. Let it go audibly through the mouth. One more big breath in. And sigh it out. From here, ripple forward to your plank position. You'll probably need to walk your feet back a few inches so that the shoulders are over the wrists or maybe just an inch behind the wrists. That can take a little pressure off of the wrists. I like that variation. From here, draw the sternum forward, inhale. Exhale, press the heels back. Quadriceps are firm. Inhale, now shift forward to the tippy toes. Exhale, lower the knees and slowly bend your elbows, grazing the ribs on your way down to your belly. And once you're on your belly, untuck your toes. Feet will come hips with distance. And then bring your hands just outside of your mat and come up to your fingertips. So make little tents with your hands. And turn your fingers in just slightly towards one another. The elbows come over the wrists. Now engage your quadriceps, lift your kneecaps. Try to keep the tops of your feet grounded on your mat. Anchor down through your pubic bone and inhale as you lift your chest and head into what I like to call a super cobra pose. Energetically, think of drawing yourself forward and off of your mat. Inhale, peel up a little higher. Exhale, lower chest and head down. Inhale, peel up, chest and head, gaze over the right elbow. Exhale, look forward, lower chest and head. Keep the legs engaged this whole time. Inhale, peeling up, looking left. Exhale, softly lower, forehead rest. One more round, inhale, peel up. You can press into your finger pads, lifting the heart a little higher. Exhale to lower. Inhale, press down to rise, gaze left. And exhale, lower. This time, keeping the gaze forward, press into the finger pads. Anchor down through the pubic bone, press the sternum forward, peel up a little higher, breathing in, and exhale lower. Bring your hands now next to your chest and press yourself back into a child's pose with the knees touching, the big toes kissing, and wrap your arms around your shins and rest your forehead. Let the shoulders roll forward, rounding the back body to open the back of the heart space. And you might visualize that green ball of spinning energy at the back body, at the heart level. And slowly slide the hands forward in front of you, press up to your tabletop, inhale. Knees come hips width distance. Exhale to round the back, press the earth away. Curl the toes and lift the hips, downward facing dog. 
Give a little bend to your knees and please start to walk towards the top of your mat. Feet come hips width distance when you arrive. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Come to fingertips or hands slide up the shins, flattening the back. Exhale, bend the knees, fold over the legs. And grab a hold of opposite elbow in your ragdoll pose. Sway a little side to side, decompressing the low back. It might feel nice to straighten one leg and then the other. Or perhaps just keeping both knees bent is a little bit more comforting for the low back. And then from here, release the fingertips down to the earth, re-bend both knees and begin to round up, re-stacking the vertebrae one at a time. Draw the shoulder heads up by the ears once you stand tall and then slide the shoulder blades down the back, rotating the palms forward. And then let's do that one more time. Inhale, draw the shoulders up by the ears. Exhale, slide the shoulder blades down the back. Let's go the other direction, moving the shoulder heads back, up, and then forward. One more time, back, up, and forward. Then relax, find your stance, anchor through the feet, hug the outer legs in towards the midline of the body, drop the tailbone down, lift the heart space. Let's take one Surya Namaskar A, Sun Salutation A with a back bend. Inhale, sweep the arms high, unite the palms overhead. Exhale, bend the elbows, thumbs to the nape of the neck. Let the head drop back into the forearms into a little supporting back bend. Hold for one more inhale. Exhale, bend the knees, hinge at the hips, fold forward, fingertips touch down. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, flattening the back. Exhale, plant the palms, step one foot back, then the other, plank position. Hold for an inhale. Exhale, shift forward. You can set the knees down if you need. Chaturanga, bend the elbows, lowering halfway. Plank the toes and straighten the arms. You can take cobra or upward facing dog. Shoulder blades down the back. Exhale to lift the hips and crawl the toes underneath you. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. Step the feet a little bit closer together and inhale, raise your right leg high into the sky. Exhale, bend the right knee laterally, open the hip up, stretching the right hip flexors. Take a big breath in through your nose. Exhale, draw your right knee in towards your nose, rounding your back, pull the low belly in, then look forward, lift those hips and step the right foot through between the hands. Lower the left knee down, untuck the toes. Bring your hands to the right thigh, press yourself upright into Anjane Asana Low Lunge. So find the hips, left hip over left knee, finding stability, lift up through the pelvic floor, and then expand the arms upward. Same variation we took at the top of the mat, unite the palms overhead, inhale lifting the front of the spine, exhale bend the elbows, bring the thumbs to the nape of the neck and gently let the head drop back a little bit into the support of the hands and the forearms. So it's a little supporting back bend. Keep the front ribs knitting in. Both legs are strong. You're actively drawing them together. One more full breath. Then inhale, arms extend, release the back bend two choices. We're moving to half splits. You can play with it and try working on your balance as you hinge at the hips and sweep the arms back, or you can lower down with more support. Fingertips drop down, then you straighten the right leg and walk the fingertips back. You can also get in that way and then take your time as you sweep the arms back into an airplane expression of the pose. So finding a little bit more activation through the back body. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, reach the fingertips back as you draw the heart forward. 
Arms can stay just outside of you, or you can interlace the fingers behind the low back and reach the knuckles towards the back of your mat. We've got one more breath. From here, release the fingertips down, re-bend the right knee, curl the left toes underneath you, and ground down through the ball of the left foot, left knee lifts up. Root down through the left palm, and open the right arm up into an easy twist. Now think of moving that right hip crease back towards the left heel, and then the rotation is through the thoracic spine, the upper back. Nothing forceful, just a little spiral of the right rib cage back, reaching through the right arm and fingertips. All right, from here, start to toe heel your right foot wider and back. So it might come off of the mat. Then spin the left heel down and keep walking that right foot back, back, back. From here, step your right foot behind your left leg. Press down through the ball of the right foot. Lift the pelvis and the heart space up into wild thing. So if you can, get the right heel up and just ground down through the ball of the right foot. Sweep the right arm overhead. Press open your heart. Stay with your breath. Take one more. Then slowly lower the right hand down. Find your plank pose. Long line of energy from heels to crown. Full breath in through the nose. Your choice, chaturanga or skip it and go straight to down dog. If you took it, the inhale is for up dog. The exhale is to curl the toes and lift the hips downward facing dog. Great work, you guys. Take a big breath in and let it go. Walk the feet a little closer together. Inhale, raise your left leg high. Exhale, bend your knee laterally, open your hip up, stretching and lengthening your hip flexors on the left side. Take an inhale. Exhale, draw your left knee in towards your nose, round your spine like cat pose, pull the belly in and up, then look forward, lift the hips to step the left foot through. Right knee sets down, untuck the back toes, bring your hands to the left thigh, and press yourself up. Take a moment, find your stability in Anjani Asana. Lift up through the pelvic floor. Imagine scissoring the legs together. Then uplift the arms, inhale. Palms connect, exhale, bend the elbows, thumbs come to the nape of the neck. Little back bend as you let the head drop back. Keeping all of that strength in the lower body Lift through the side body, the side of the ribs, pressing the sternum high. Inhale to slowly come out of the back bend, re-extend the arms. Your choice is to first lower your fingertips down or a little balance challenge. Straighten the left leg, hinge at the hips. You might need to slide that left heel forward a little bit, I usually do. Arms sweep back just outside of your hips. Palms turn down. Shoulder blades squeeze together, strengthening the rhomboids. The triceps as well. Then you can stay with open arms or you can go for the interlace of the hands. And if you do, reach the knuckles to the back of the mat. One more full breath. Your hands are behind your back or open wide. Lower your fingertips down. Re-bend your left knee. Plant the palms, curl the right toes, and lift the right knee up. Ground down through the right palm and find your easy twist. Left arm expands upward. Move the left hip crease towards the back of the mat. Keep that right quad active. The tendency is for the right hip to droop down a little bit. So lift the right frontal hip bone, maybe just an inch. Finding squared hips and then the rotation in the upper back. All right, from here, start to toe heel that left foot back and a little bit wider. Keep toe heeling, then spin the right pinky edge of the foot down. And you're going to step your left foot behind your right leg. 
Press down through the ball of your left foot. Lift the pelvis. Reach the left arm overhead. Into your wild thing. Breathe into the chest. Trust yourself. Slow and steady breath. One more. And then slowly taking your time to come out of it. Plank position. Quads are firm. Collarbones broad. Big breath in. Your choice to down dog or take a chaturanga. And then an up dog. Inhale. And then all meeting in downward facing dog. On the exhale. Such good work, yogis. Big inhale through the nose, please. Audible exhale through the mouth. One more slow cleansing breath in through the nose and sigh it out through the mouth. Inhale, lift your heels, look forward. Exhale, bend your knees, sink your hips back to your heels. You can walk, you can step, or you can hop. Top of the back. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees deeply, sink the hips back. Lift the torso and arms up into Utkatasana chair pose. Just got to fix these pants. They're a little tight. <laughs> Sink the hips back. Good. From here, a little movement pattern. Inhale, round the back. Close the forearms together. Tuck your chin into your chest. Exhale, press to stand. Elbows wide. Heart expands. Inhale, bend the knees. Hips back. Rounding the upper back. Chin to chest. Closing the forearms like a book. Exhale, press to stand, heart open. Inhale, sinking back into your chair, rounding the back. Exhale, open and expand, elbows wide. Twice more, inhale, sinking low, pulling the belly in. Exhale, rising up, elbows wide. One more time, inhale, and exhale. Find a neutral spine, release your arms beside your body. And then please bring your left hand to your heart and your right hand on top of your left. Feel your heartbeat. May we remember to connect to our physical, emotional, and spiritual hearts. When we're able to give love, it's an act of growing. When we're able to receive love, it's an act of expanding. Love not only connects us to our own vulnerability, it connects us to others and allows us to open ourselves up to our brothers and sisters and to the world and the universe. It is a unifying force. Please release your arms and open your eyes. Bring your hands to your hips. Ground down through your right foot and step your left foot back. And then make sure that your feet are still hips width and distance. So if not, you can toe heel one foot a little bit wider towards the edge of the mat. Inhale, reach the arms up, elongating the back. And exhale, bend the right knee and bring the elbows wide. So go longer if you need, so that the knee doesn't come past the ankle, just over it to, in your deepest expression. Inhale, straighten the right leg, reach the arms upward. Exhale, bend the right knee, elbows wide into your back bend. Inhale, finding a more neutral position, zip up through the uh, pelvic floor, pulling the navel in. Exhale, sinking down, opening the heart. Twice more, inhale, expanding up as you straighten the right leg. And exhale to bend the right knee and elbows wide. One more, inhale. And exhale. Now hold here with the right knee bent. Notice if the inner arch of the left foot is sinking down into your mat. Maybe come a little bit out of the right knee so that you can press more through the pinky edge side of the left foot. We don't want to dump too much weight into the right leg and ankle. And see if you can bring the elbows slightly forward of the wrist. Encouraging the heart space to open. 
strengthening the back body. One more inhale and exhale. Slowly straighten the right leg, re-extend the arms, and step your left foot in about a footprint or two. So now you're in a shorter stance preparing for pyramid pose. Bring your left hand to your left hip. Inhale, lift the spine and right arm tall. Exhale, hinge at the hips, come forward halfway and pause. Move the right hip crease back. Oops, wrong arms, right hand to right hip. Left arm expands forward. Inhale here. Exhale, lower your left hand down, maybe to fingertips. And then slowly bring your awareness back to the right hip. Notice if it's creeping up. Draw the right hip back, heart up. And then begin to find your twist as you expand the right arm up into your revolved triangle pose. If you have the flexibility, maybe that hand starts to come to the outside of the right foot. If you get really wobbly and lose your balance, bring it back to the left. And really find the length in your spine first, and then the rotation in the spine second. Both legs are strong, kneecaps lifted. All right, from here, we're moving into a balancing pose. To get there, bring your right hand to your right hip, look down at your mat, give a bend to your right knee, and bring your left hand forward about a foot in front of your right foot. Unplug the left heel and lift the left leg up. Flex the ankle, feel the energy in your back leg. Same way we got into revolved triangle. Move the right hip crease back, First, find the length through the spine, then start to rotate. Right arm high when ready. Your drishti or your gaze will gently follow the rotation that you're moving in without crunching the neck or straining the eyes. Two more breaths. Lift the left frontal hip bone just a little bit. Right hand lowers, bend the right knee, step the left foot forward to meet the right, and fold over your legs. Ah, feels good, doesn't it? <laughs> and then from here, we'll take Pada Bhustasana, so wrap your peace fingers around your big toes. Inhale to lengthen your spine, straightening the arms. Exhale, keep the knees as bent as you need to, to fold over the thighs, bend the elbows wide and give just a little pull on the toes as you bring the spine forward. Draw the shoulder blades down the back, but let the weight of the head go. And then release the toes, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees deeply, Utkatasana, chair pose. Lift the torso and arms high. And as you sink the hips low, again, rounding the back, close the forearms together, chin to chest, inhale. Exhale, press to stand, elbows wide, exhale. Inhale, sinking low, rounding the back, belly pulls in. Exhale, straightening the legs, opening the chest. Twice more, inhale, sitting low. Exhale, press and rise. One more, inhale, opening the back. Exhale, opening the front. Neutral spine, arms release. Close the eyes and pause. Connect to your heart, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Notice what is present. All right, second side, hands to hips. Shift the weight into your left foot as you step your right foot back about three and a half to four feet, depending on how long your legs are. And then bring the hips forward. They won't be completely square, but see if you can bring that right hip forward a bit. Make sure your feet are wide enough, hips with distance. Arms reach up, inhale. Exhale, bend the left knee, elbows wide, go longer in the stance as needed so that the knee 
comes over the ankle and not past it. Inhale, zip up from the pelvic floor, expand the arms high. Exhale, re-bend the knee, hips descend, heart opens. A few more times. Inhale, reaching up, arms and legs straighten. Exhale to re-bend. Two more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Holding this one. Again, bring your awareness to the back foot. Notice if you're rolling to the inner arch. Maybe back out of the bend in the front knee a little bit. If you feel any compression where it's uncomfortable or pinching, you can hinge slightly forward at the hips to bring more space into the low back. Two more breaths. Let them be slow, fluid, and deep. Then slowly re-straighten the left leg and arms and step your right foot in about a foot printer two. Bring your left hand to your left hip. Inhale, lift the front of the spine and the right arm high. Exhale, hinge at your hips. Come forward halfway and pause. Move your left hip crease back. Lengthen the space from your hip bone to your left rib, your lower left rib. Take another breath in. Exhale, right hand lowers. You're welcome to keep the fingertips grounded or use a prop if you have. Then take a moment to find the length in your spine on the inhale. Then start to twist and revolve the chest open to the left on the exhale. Open the left arm towards the sky when ready. Think of your arms as an expand, uh, as an extension, I mean, of your heart, right? Expanding your love from your heart center and outward through your arms and fingertips. Left hand to left hip, look down at the earth. Give a bend to your left knee. Walk the right hand forward about a foot in front of the left foot. Unplug the right heel. Start to shift the weight into the left foot as you elevate the right leg. Try to bring it parallel to the earth and drop the right frontal hip bone down a bit. Take an inhale to find the length through the spine and then the exhale to twist. Coming back into that revolved shape, revolved Ardha Chandrasana. Left arm high, reaching through the fingers. The whole body is expanding in all directions. Stay with your breath. You've got it. Just two more. And then softly lower left fingertips down. Give a bend to the left knee as you step the right foot forward and fold over your legs. This time, Padahasasana. Lift the balls of the feet, slide the palms underneath so that the toes tickle the wrist creases. Inhale, straighten the arms, lengthen the spine. Exhale, bend the knees as much as you need. Elbows go wide, head softens. If the knees are really bent, see if with each exhale, you might just straighten them a little bit more at a time. Release the hands from the feet. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale to fold. Inhale to stand tall or to Bahastasana, sweeping the arms high. Exhale, hands to heart center. Samaski to keep. Close the eyes, tune into your breath. We'll take one more standing balancing pose, not to Ranjasana, the dancer pose. So come to the center of your mat and release your arms beside your body. Then just lift the left arm upward, turning the palm forward. Bend your right elbow, turning your right palm open as if you're holding a tray. 
and then shift the weight into your left foot as you bend the right knee, reach back to grab the inner arch of your right foot. So sometimes the tendency is to internally rotate the arm and grab the outer edge of the foot. Keep the palm open, you're holding that tray, right? And then you're grabbing the inner arch. Bring the gaze forward, align the knees. Inhale, feel the energy, the prana lifting you, elongating you, reaching you up towards the sky. Exhale as you kick your right foot back into your hand. Keep kicking as you draw the torso forward, reaching through the left arm and fingers. Careful of locking the left knee, give a micro bend to the knee. Stay with the breath. Find your edge, come a little bit deeper, one more breath. And then kick to release, stand tall, right foot lowers, arms release, eyes close. Take a moment to center yourself. Deep breath in and out. Second side, bend your left elbow beside your waist, palm open, right arm high. Shift the weight into the right foot. As you bend the left knee, reach back, grab the inner arch of the foot so the thumb is turned up. Align the knees, hug the inner thighs. Inhale, zipper up the low belly, reach through the right arm, and exhale to find your back bend. Kick the left foot back into the hand. And as you do, begin to hinge at the hips and reach the right arm forward. I forgot to say you can do this at the wall. The wall is a great prop in this pose. So you do it facing the wall and your right hand would come to the wall. Trust yourself. If you fall out, it's no big deal. Just get back in when ready. One more breath. And gracefully kick to release. Stand tall. Left foot lowers. Right hand lowers. Close the eyes. Establish your breath. Hmm. Inhale, sweep the arms high, Ardhvastasana. Exhale, hinge at the hips, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bend the knees, take a seat, cross the shins, and come into Sukhasana. So we just did a lot of front body and front of the shoulder opening. So let's open the back body a little bit. Bring your elbows wide and then actually bring them forward in front of you like you're a surgeon preparing for operation. And then you're going to bring the right elbow underneath the left and ravel the forearms together, connecting the palms. Draw the shoulder blades down the back and press your forearms away from your face. Then from here, press your left hand slightly in towards your right as you tilt your forearms to the right. Maybe close the eyes. And then slowly bring the wrists back over the elbows and take it over to the left, pressing your right palm gently against your left. And just notice how that changes the sensations in the shoulder blades and the muscles around the shoulder blades. And then bring the wrists back over the elbows. One more breath here. Press the pinkies away from the face. And slowly unravel, elbows wide, inhale, and release the arms, hands to knees, exhale. Close the eyes. And just observe. All right, let's do a couple prone or belly down back bends, and then we'll cool down and take it all the way into Shavasana. So please come to your belly. The first belly down back bend will be locust pose. 
So open your arms out to your sides with your palms turned down. Bring your lips to your mouth. And then first, just feel the engagement of your back body. So draw the shoulder heads away from the chest, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Then slowly on the inhale, lift the chest head, legs, and then lastly, arms. Really engage the quadriceps. Point the toes, reach the toes to the back of the mat as you draw the crown forward. Drop the tailbone down. Can you lift the heart up a little bit higher? And then soften. Set your left cheek down to the earth, palms open. And close the eyes. And taking one more belly down back bend, shin comes forward. Bend both knees. Reach back to grab the outer edges of your feet for Dhanurasana bow pose. And see if you can draw the knees a little bit closer together. And then on the inhale, press the feet back into the hands. So we did this pose standing on one leg. Now both legs press back. Draw the shin bones back, weight it to the soft part of the belly. Little lift of the gaze. Maybe the thighs come off of the mat a little bit higher. Two more breaths. And then slowly soften down, right cheek lowers, legs extend, palms turn open. Keeping your right cheek down on your mat, bring your right arm out to the side in a half goal post so that your elbow is in line with your shoulder. And bring your left hand just underneath your left shoulder and start to roll to your outer right hip and your left foot will step behind the right leg. So you're opening up the front of the right shoulder, right collarbone, right pec, and compressing the back of the shoulder into the rhomboid and the traps a bit. If it's too intense, you can extend the left leg forward and maybe not stack the hips. And you can just use the pressure of your left hand to deepen it. And then slowly extend the left leg long, come back to the belly, bring your left cheek down on your mat, left arm opens out to the side in a half goal post, 90 degrees in the elbow, right hand under the right shoulder, roll to the outer left hip, and if you want, bend the right knee and step the right foot behind the left thigh. Breathe into the sensation, whatever it is. It might be slightly uncomfortable. It might be a little intense. Can you meet that sensation with love and with compassion? And if it's too intense, be kind to yourself and back out a little bit. And slowly release, rolling back to the belly. Extend the right leg long. And then from here, come into Sphinx Pose. So now we'll counter that front body opening with the back body opening. The elbows come slightly forward in front of you. And then cross your left arm under your right and walk the left hand out to the right. And then cross the right arm over the left and shimmy the elbows away from one another so that you're trying to cross at the upper arms. And then the chin just comes over the top of the right shoulder to relax, letting the head go. Heels can flop open. Slowly walk the elbows in towards one another and then come back to Sphinx Pose. And then the elbows come forward once more. You'll cross your right arm under first and the left arm over on top and shimmy. And then 
find a place where you can soften and let go of effort. Slowly walk the elbows back in. No rush in getting up. Coming back to sphinx, elbows under the shoulders, fingers spread wide. Inhale, lifting the sternum, pressing down through the forearms. Imagine dragging the elbows back towards the hips, really pressing the heart space forward through the gate of the arms. And then soften, chest and forehead come down, hands slide back under the shoulders, press yourself up to your hands and knees, and walk yourself forward to the top of your mat, cross your shins, take a seat, and bring your way, yourself all the way down onto your back, and we'll close practice with a little twist, arms open wider to a goal post, knees come up over the hips, inhale here. Exhale, drop both knees over to the right, and it might be good for the low back to plant the feet. Shift the hips a little bit to the left, and you can simply allow the knees to stack, or you can wrap the left thigh over the right. And let that left shoulder leg become heavy. Eyes closed. Start to bring your awareness back to your heart center. Feeling the love and warmth in this area. And feeling that love radiate beyond just your heart chakra. Outward into every cell of your body and even beyond into room you're in, touching the other beings in your home, maybe even visualizing that green light expanding outward into your neighborhood, into your city, into whatever state you're in. and beyond, keep seeing that beautiful, loving, compassionate, and joyful energy. See it expanding outward into the world. Belly draws in, uncross the left leg if you took the wrap, and bring the knees back up. Shift the hips slightly over to the right and lower both knees to the left. And you're welcome to wrap the right thigh over the left. Let the right shoulder blade become heavy. Take some deep, relaxing breaths. and cross the right leg if you took the wrap. Knees come up and please bring them into your chest. Find a loving embrace as you wrap your arms around your shins. Bring your forehead to meet your knees, come into a small ball. Meet yourself one more time with love, with compassion, with gratitude and with acceptance. Take a big breath in and exhale, release the head. Release the legs forward on the mat. If you have that bolster or blanket, it could be nice rolled up underneath the knees to support the low back. Or you're welcome to just lay freely. 
without any props and just open the body up, take up space. Maybe like a starfish, arms open wide, legs wide, palms up. Let go of any control of the breath. Let it be regular and smooth and natural. Feel the backside of your body and its connection to the earth. Feel a sense of weight and heaviness as you disengage your muscles and soften around the edges of your being. Shavasana. a slightly deeper, fuller breath in through your nose, part your lips and sigh through your mouth, again, slow, full breath in through your nose, and maybe even a sigh of ah. Brush your thumbs across each fingertip and wiggle your toes. Roll your wrists and your ankles. Find a full body stretch, arms overhead, point the toes. Big breath in. Exhale, bring one knee into your chest and then the other. Roll off to one side. Fetal pose for a moment. Pausing to honor this shape, which symbolizes rebirth and renewal. A whole yoga class can symbolize a cycle of life. And from this moment, we are being reborn, starting anew. Slowly press yourself up, please, to a seat and allow your eyes to stay closed. Hands unite at heart center, just in front of Anahata. May we remember to recognize love as the unifying force that it is. May we recognize that we are all interconnected through an intricate web of relationships, extending through life and the universe. Love 
not only brings us into wholeness with ourselves, it connects us and bonds us to our brothers and sisters, to our family, and to that greater source of love and truth that some call source, some call spirit, some call higher power or God. That source is within us and all around us. May we give thanks to this beautiful, infinite source of love. From my heart to yours, namaste. Thank you so much for joining me, yogis. I hope you enjoyed. If you did enjoy, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. There's also a link to a Venmo account. Any donations are greatly appreciated so that I can continue to provide content for you like this. Thank you so much and until next and until next time.